Uh, thank you very much for, for, for a very interesting uh, presentation. I have one thing that I kind of, I mean, keeps bothering me in the back of my mind regarding, I can certainly understand that poverty numbers go up because very small changes for vulnerable groups, you, you, you can shoot below or you can fall below the poverty line. I mean, th th that story I can kind of follow. But I have a little bit of a hard time, I mean, getting it intuitively right in the back of my head uh, about inequality, because um, I mean, I mean, w w when you're sort of looking at it, and then you sort of say, "Oh, the rural sector was not affected so much." I mean, assumedly, the poor are in the rural sector, and the ones who are losing are the ones in the urban sector. I know that there are poor people in India in the urban sector, but I, th there's something about that combination of of the, the, the major numbers of poor in the rural areas versus uh, the uh, um, urban centers where you have the relatively richer and then we are saying inequality is shooting up. There, there, there's something about that which, I mean, and I was wondering whether somebody can kind of help me uh, crack that knot so that I can in instinctively understand it better. And I should, I should say that uh, the reason I'm asking the question is because we have struggled with exactly that issue in a paper with uh, Peter Langview and others. So th 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 that's why I'm asking the question also. Thank you. Okay, and one more question uh, by Nasmu. Yes. Thank you. So my question actually uh, relates to the context of your study. So India didn't re experience a V-shaped recovery, and yet you have striking patterns of the poorer you are, the faster you recover. So very sharp. So I was expecting L-shaped pattern uh, for, for the poorer. Um, so, and I was reflecting on profiles of households or groups, so for example, female-headed households. So uh, my struggle is really to kind of connect with these patterns that for certain households, uh, you know, I mean, is there much heterogeneity in the way you have profiled uh, or whether your household data does allow you to kind of look into these demographic specific patterns of recovery? Just to sort of understand, because Indian economy is not experiencing a V-shaped recovery pattern, but here you have striking contrast in patterns. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, very quick answer, and then we do the second one. Um, so I'm not sure. So I, what your main point was that the poor are really concentrated in the rural areas, and rural areas didn't suffer as much. Um, urban are richer people, and they suffered more. So how is inequality widening? I. I'm not sure. Um, so there is a lot of heterogeneity in incomes in both rural and urban sectors, and there's a large section of the urban sector people who classify who come under the urban sector, which are uh, uh, which are um, engaged in informal work, and they are. If you want, I haven't done the comparison. They can be much poorer than their rural counterparts. That's one. Um, so that distinction really will not bite into the inequality numbers, and second. Um, the rural sector suffered less, so especially in the event study framework when we were seeing the regression coefficients, we find that the drop for the urban sector was around 45%. Rural sector was 35%. So in itself, it's, in itself, it's not a small number, that's one. And the rural has, um, I'll be wary before I say that the rural are poorer than urban. Um, so I, I'm not, uh, I don't think there's a mismatch really between these. But if you have more to say, I'm happy to talk about that too. Um, hi. Um, so the V-shaped recovery, so the decile graph that we were talking about, we are talking about dynamic deciles here. So what I'm doing is I'm tracking deciles. I'm not tracking individuals. Um, and that is primarily because of problems with the data set. We, were, we have our concerns with using this data set in the panel format. So the, the story that you're talking about is really tracking individuals and seeing how the poor were doing over time, how the rich were doing over time. Here we're talking about deciles, really, so how the poorest decile was doing over time and so forth. There's a lot of uh, heterogeneity study analysis done in the paper. Uh, this is, by the way, a wider working paper, so um, I'll be happy to uh, have your comments. Uh, and we can talk about the heterogeneity bit um, in person, too, if you want. Thank you. Yeah, very, 
very quick too. <laughs> okay. Uh, so one is about, you know, why are Paraguay and Mexico behaving so differently from the rest of the countries, right? Because that can really help us understand what can we do better in terms of reducing these inequalities. The second one was about the employment rates plot that you showed, right? When you're looking at by gender, you on the y axis you had it at one, right? So is yeah, so maybe you know like I was not able to follow that part. Uh, you. Okay. So um, my question is about the sectorial decomposition of the people who lost their job. Because during COVID in the US, we realized that people who had jobs like taxi drivers, restaurant attendants, didn't have to go to work. So but high, people who were high earners were able to work from home. So how does that influence the disparity in income, given the job composition? Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you can exploit the panel structure that sometimes some of these data sets for some countries have. Uh, I'm curious about the, the transitions, because some of the levels right, of employment and all those are going back to normal. But I wonder if there are new household arrangements, for instance, where people who were employed before the pandemic are no longer employed, but someone is in the house who is now working. And, and that means that perhaps the labor force looks quite different now. Thank you. Th thanks. I mean, I mean, very briefly, and it's basically the same question. I mean, the income share of the poor went up, the income share of the rich went down, implication, inequality went up. I, I, I mean, th th there's something with that which I just don't get. Um, and then urban more affected. So again, I, it, it bothers me a bit. And, and, and I know that it, there may be something that, that's very clear for somebody else. I just don't, I don't have it yet completely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very good question. Okay. Very quick answer. Yeah. I'll be super fast, don't worry. Um, so, uh, one. One, uh, we, we all basically, we treat it like the base. The, so it's all related to what uh, the initial year that you, I think it was 2019 January or the first quarter. And so with respect to that, how it changes. So it's all normalized to one. That's why you see that. Why those two cases, Mexico and Paraguay, super interesting? I don't have the answer. If anybody has more ideas, I'm more than happy to talk about that. Could be related to how the government implemented lockdowns, for example, or other things. But brief answer, I, we don't know. Because it's not the government um, transfers and it's not the remittances, but it's super interesting. So definitely something to look. I agree with you, 100%. And the sectoral, the sectoral, uh, we had uh, we observed also in Latin America a decrease in employment in the tertiary sector, uh, and but also in the secondary, and the a slight increase in the primary sector. So this is how it changes. Uh, now, for the income, for the inequality, I showed you up to 2020, but those sectoral changes are both in 2020 and 2021. Uh, the implications for that, I, I ha we have some data in which we look at the income. Uh, I don't remember it now like this super fast, but we can, we can look at that. Uh, th thank you for that. Um, panel would love to absolutely this was because we were going fast and we wanted to have a general idea of how much COVID changed uh, is it something new that we have to are there new things that we have to keep in mind or is it just the previous issues getting deeper but definitely something that we would love to explore further uh, and on the income so and uh, that the, the initial one is a, is something general where we were looking at the um, what happened between 20 2000 and, and 2019. So the, you see uh, those increases or decreases are perfectly in line with the decrease in inequality. Then what happened in, in uh, 2020, uh, I'm not showing there the, the poorest and the richest. Um, and I understand the concern. I, my, my guess is that because the urban were more affected, it depends on the shares. In the event, is, is like what we were saying before with you. My guess is that the, the, there is a large share of um, of people in urban areas that were affected and became poorer, and that overall impacts in inequality. But for the sake, of, I'm more than happy to keep on brainstorming on this. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, uh, very interesting uh, presentation, uh, regional analysis, and for on the insightful questions. So, for the next presentation, uh, we uh, we have another Rostrom from uh, uh, Japan, right? And uh, 
so you can present, uh, you know, like uh, the impact of the pandemic for MENA, you know, which is a, if you work on MENA, then you know that, you know, data access for MENA is even more difficult, you know, than other reason. Not because uh, MENA is poorer, uh, not, not because MENA is poorer, but just because, you know, data access, you know, for MENA is more difficult. But this issue uh, and from the Indian context, right, because if schools are closed and women majorly are responsible for childcare responsibilities, then the opposite would have happened, right? We would have seen more women withdrawing, but I totally understand it's the income channel kicking in here because they need to support the husbands, right? But given that we are talking about a COVID period where jobs also were fewer, right? There, were, uh, there was a crunch in terms of the available jobs. So how are these women able to find these jobs given that even men are losing the jobs that they had in the pre-COVID era? So that's what, you know, I, I, don't, I was not able to reconcile both of the two findings together. And the last thing was about the losses, right? You find that the loss in terms of 20, uh, 25 hours less uh, than that or even above than that were going down, right? That means they were uh, supplying more intensively. But that could also be resulting from the fact that there are women who are moving out of the labor force, right? So it's this data is coming only from the set of women who are currently engaged in the labor market. And it's probably the ones who are already engaged intensively that are re capturing this effect. So. I think my problems are basically statistical questions uh, because there's a lot of dummy variables in your model. So there's a tendency that you have a dummy variable trap. How did you actively solve, uh, uh, get out of that problem? Because if there's a, a dummy variable trap, there's going to be multicollinearity between your variables, which can actually affect the signs you observe on some of the coefficients. And the next is the fact that you had a negative uh, a relationship on the, People who have more uh, six or some number of children, they are less likely to be unemployed. And then on the other equation, they are more likely to be out of the labor force. I think those results are sort of counterintuitive, right? If you are less likely to be unemployed, then it means you have you are more likely to be in the labor force. If I mean, what was the dependent variable? Because that, that result feel a little bit counterintuitive for me. And also the labor force. What was your definition for the labor force? Very interesting work. Thank you, Nada. Um, so I think my first question is related to the first question that was asked. And um, I just wanted to know more about the sample of women that you're including in your regression because wh whether those are women who were all uh, working at some point before the pandemic and now they can be unemployed or out of the labor force. I'm, I'm just a bit confused about this finding uh, related to the um, um, less likely of being out of the labor force with you know, more, more children. I'm just a bit surprised. The other thing I, I I mean, I know you're controlling for countries um, uh, fixed effects, and um, but you have four countries, and for some countries you have two rounds, for uh, for some others you have four rounds. I mean, I, I was wondering, what, it, 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 would, I mean, would that be possible to see the findings by country? I know the sample sizes are very small, but I'm not. I mean, I was wondering if at least for those countries for which you have four rounds, if you can show these because the closure, the type of closure and and the um, timing of school closures were different from one country to another. I mean, I'm not sure about the <laughs> information, but I'm just wondering how this is affecting your findings. Last, um, uh, related to this finding about the loss in income, I was wondering if that is related to uh, a decline of the working hours uh, of those women and whether you're controlling for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have a very useful question. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so um, starting with the question on unemployment, um, um, so the point is that we, we're not saying that women found jobs. They're just more interested in going back to the labor force. So that's why you can see that like, it's not that uh, men did not uh, like, um, lost jobs and the women were able to find jobs. It's just that the women were more interested in, in just get, getting back. So that's the, the point. I'm not sure if it's answering your questions or not. OK. <laughs> OK. Um, OK, I have a. Okay. 
so like I think you had another question regarding to women uh, um the last uh, the hours that was in, in the intensity was going up. Yeah. So density is conditioned on being in the labor market. Mm -hmm. So probably it's, it's not even captured the difference. Yes. Um I, I don't know. So so the definition we had for this is that uh, we were looking at just women uh, uh, on the in in the particular wave. Um, whether women were unemployed or not. So we didn't control for their pre-COVID uh, situation, basically. Okay, yeah. And we didn't do that because um, there was this like recall period problem um, and the, the data was very noisy with that. So we eventually dropped it. We didn't control that for that. Um, so for the trap for the dummy variable uh, and the collinearity, um, Yes, that could be a problem, but um, I'm honestly not pretty sure how we can um, we can solve that. Um, do you have an idea? We have explored yeah, yeah. The, now I, I don't recall you know, how many dummy variables are in your models. Yeah. Yes, we will definitely look at. Um, and uh, also for the, I think you, f you, you didn't, um, if I understand your question correctly, you weren't convinced by the idea that the uh, unemployment was um, was decreasing and the out of the labor force was increasing, or like the opposite. So um, I think that's an interpretation that we saw in the literature uh, for s uh, several papers. So usually when the uh, out of the labor force coefficient increases, but the, the uh, unemployment uh, decreases, this, the, this does not mean that really unemployment decreased, but that um, pe more people were discouraged and went out of the labor force. So that's something any, that usually is interpreted this way. I'm not sure if, yeah, if someone has other comments. Yes, and for the definition of women uh, sample, um, uh, we were uh, looking specifically at women with, um, uh, so we had, we were condi conditioning our sample for women, uh, women that didn't have children and women with children. Uh, we also had like the coefficient for um, married, uh, like being married, but usually this, they're very correlated, like uh, being married and having and having children, uh, or uh, yeah, that's uh, that's our sample. Um, we have explored finding by countries, um, uh, and um, they didn't reveal different different results. Like we have looked at that before, um, and. Uh, yeah, the, for the school closure, yes, it varies by country, but then we have for each, it's pooled, it's a pooled data set, so for each uh, period or for each row, you have like um, this uh, intensity of school closure. So it goes from one to, uh, to three, and so the highest is three and so on. So I think it's, it's still, it can be captured in the data well, so I don't think it's a big problem. Um, and for the loss of income uh, and the decline in the working hours, um, um, I think, yes, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure if I, we showed anything related to, to, to the loss of income being significant. I, I can't really remember, but I think it's. So I'm, I'm surprised that you did not control for the length of the lockdown because I think that is a more useful variable when it comes to predicting the effect on unemployment or unemployment. I mean, the length of the lockdown. How many days did the country pursue the lockdown? I think that's a more important variable that you should include in your model. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief, but... Um, uh, first of all, I mean, it, it's very clear that it's always interesting to study the impact uh, of COVID, but I mean, I think it is important to stress here uh, that we are really only looking at it uh, in 2020. So I'm kind of pondering, I mean, uh, the COVID, the serious COVID really comes after. So I'm just wondering, do you have any hypothesis as to what happened in 21 and 22? And then there's a footnote. Uh, the, 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 this is more for entertaining. I don't know how many people are aware of it, but the Vietnamese had actually hacked the Wuhan uh, computers, so the Vietnamese government knew very early on that something was going on. So this is maybe uh, an informal explanation of why Vietnam was able to act quite quickly. Any other questions? Uh, no, it's very interesting that you know the lockdown was for only for two months, but still you see impact. 
Two weeks. I'm so sorry. Two weeks. Uh, but still, you are seeing impacts across all the four. You know. Uh, in, it, because it's either like it's the persistence that we're seeing here, I don't know, because I would have expected that the minute the lockdown was, uh, you know, like removed, you should have moved back to the normal stages. And the second observation was regarding the unemployment rate, right? It went even below, like, uh, but then after a couple of months, it's again increasing the unemployment rate, right? So probably the income effect or loss of income during the two weeks, but that's too short a time period to lead to changes in unemployment rates, right? So maybe you might want to shed light. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, so uh, very interesting questions. Yes, um, so maybe I just uh, respond uh, to yeah you first. Uh, okay, so again, the lockdowns is only for two weeks in 2020, and and uh, the only uh, only province in Vietnam which is Da Nang City, right? They implemented a second wave of lockdown with several more weeks. But other than that, you know, it's a uniform. I mean, for the whole country. And as Finn mentioned, you know, the Vietnamese govern, uh, government, as you know, they are socialist uh, government, so they are in a way very similar to the Chinese government. And when they implemented the lockdown, you know, it's very, very rigorous because, you know, they have a machinery, government machinery going down to the community level, you know, which feels should know well, right? So, so basically, that means that, you know, they implemented it very strongly, right? And in lockdown, everything stopped, you know. You go to the street, nobody's walking uh, on the street, you know. If you look at some recent uh, picture, you know, photo, you know, from uh, from China, you know, then you have some similar ideas. So perhaps, you know, because of that, you know, regress, uh, you know, like implementation, you know, uh, of, the, of the lockdown, then we do see, you know, like only negative impacts. And... Um, and on top of that, we are also analyzing the data, right, for two, uh, more recent data. And we also see a lot of, you know, negative impacts. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, uh, Finn make a very good point, you know, we need to compare, you know, the impacts of uh, more recent year in 2021 and 22 uh, with, uh, with, with 2020, yes. Um, so for your question, right, uh, you said, um, did I respond to your question? Oh, yes, yes, because it's a uh, response, right? Because it's uniform, you know, two weeks uh, for all the lockdowns. So for the land, because it's the same for every province in Vietnam, you know, so same, you know, that's a constant, right? Yes, but indeed for a follow-up paper, you know, uh, in 2021, the government implemented, you know, lockdown lands of, va of varying length, and then we do exploit that, you know, in a follow-up paper, yes. Only in 2021 we have that, yes. Okay, so, uh, yes, so I would like to stop here, and if you have...